We found an interesting post from John Miller, if you don't know him, uh, run many companies successfully and mar done marketing, sold some, bought some. We will put his post in the show notes so you can find it there. But he has a, a very interesting take on the playbooks and the new way that we need to uh, do growth. And some of the call-outs are pretty interesting. So I thought it'd be great. Maybe we'll go into, he has a top three and then a deep dive into them and we can kind of go that way. The third one though that he mentioned that I'm, I'm still not sure we know how to play, which is community, right? So for example, some dude went on a post of ours with video and was with the Andy Raskin and here's what he wrote. Uh, well, I don't actually shoot. I, I had it up on my screen. I can't find it. I'll give you a synopsis. He said, is my company, he lists his company, a movement or a category? It doesn't matter. I would love to be on your show and everyone should go check out my thing. And it's like, he missed the community message. <laughs> it is the key to the community that we have people who are contributing into those communities or is the key that we're advertising? Like what? what is... Because he has community on here. I've heard it a million times before. You, you know, despite what people think, you can't. Starting your own community that gets third-party people in is so hard, right? So, like, so you're growing into third-party third, third communities and, like, what are you doing in there? Here's what I can say. Communities are really challenging. Some people want to talk about this stuff. Other people don't. Right. Like they just don't. And I've uh, I've been a part of communities that just over time, they just run out of juice. Right. That's, you know, people are busy or the topics aren't interesting. And I've seen companies throw tons of money at community and not have it work. I, I think, you know, we talked about this previously. Um, I think standing up community outside of your brand can be very valuable in places where people like to communicate, like Reddit. Um, if there's not a community for the category that you that you occupy, go create one. Go create one. Like, that's the easiest thing in the world to do. Like, just go create one. Like, people will find it in a place where they're looking for community. But I don't think people always go to brand and say, hey, I want community. Now the thing is, is like Notion, incredible community motion, incredible, like setting a new precedent. And it got everybody so incredibly excited about community, but because the way that product works, it really did require community and it requires like people sharing the way they use Notion. And so that is, that is very different. That is very different. And for them, they did an incredible job of creating a community, fostering a community, and then really benefiting from that community. But I'm not sure it's for everyone. Yeah, I got two things for you guys, because I got Judd has a community, so we got to ask him. But one is, I, we had Lauren Vargas um, on the show, and I asked her about LinkedIn, and she said, what's well, not community? Uh, I will use my word for it, it's a peacocking exercise, right? You're out mm. there show yourself out there and the responses you get, it's not, there's no engagement, right? You, you get, you know, except for that guy who came on and lobbied for his company so he could be on our show. And most people say, uh, preach, this is gold, you know, like these things. It's like, a yeah, that, that one, that one's good. Okay. And then the second one though, that I'm wondering, and then Odell, I got it cause Judd has a community. So he's been watching this. I think one of the things that you have from Notion that you can take from that, that good, is they have an army of customers that are willing to go out into the communities and regular world and talk about you as a solution to, a pro, pro, uh, to their you know problems or whatever, or with ideas. Um, and maybe that's part of it. But like, I don't, I think we're still trying to figure this thing out. I don't know, Judd, have you seen, uh, what have you seen in your community on that? I, I want us to be able to solve for this. At some yeah, point. I, I think the communities are tough. There's no question. Um, if you go into the, in with the idea that a community is going to drive direct sales, it, you're probably going to fail. Um, the other part is when you tie a community to a product, it has to be the right product. 
notion works. I would say something like a Canva could work, right? You've got super users and you share information and now you've created an army of basically brand ambassadors are going to go around and say, this is the best thing you need to be on it. And it did. If you go in and you're an enterprise software solution, right? Maybe you could use a user community. Sure. But if you're trying to do it more as a, hey, we're solving a problem together, and then you throw salespeople into this community, you're going to kill your community. Sure. Um, community is just what it says. It is a community, and it needs to be approached in that way that we are together solving problems, being apart, helping each other, growing together, not we are here to sell. Okay, um, but that's a that's a owned community. I'm talking about, like, for example, your community that yep. you own, which is a third-party community. Would you have that same answer there? I, I think the reason the community work was it was third party. It was not directly tied to a business. We didn't say powered by. There was no, we do this. Rarely did we ever even talk about anything other than here's where we work or what we do or anecdotes from what we had done. That allowed people to feel safe. Because I remember when they came in and I started with Sangram uh, Vajra who started Terminus. They're like, oh, do I have to have Terminus? We're like, absolutely not. We don't care what you have. You got demand base. You've got six cents. We don't care. We're here to be marketers together and to solve problems together. That unified the, the community. And I would say third parties have the innate ability to do that. Right. right? But they what I do, if I'm Marketo and you have a community with a thousand marketers in there, what do I do? Honestly, as a company, it's hard. Some, some of these third parties will allow sponsorships or events or things like that just for visibility, but not trackability. So in other words, you know, a lot of the companies go, you have to share leads. And for us, we just said, no, you don't want to be a part of this. Don't. We're not sharing leads. If you want to build a relationship and start with somebody, fine. That worked for us. Um, if Marketo said, we want to get in there, instead of approaching it potentially as the organization, say, who in our, our area might want to be a part of this? And how do we create internal brand ambassadors that go in there and they're just a part of it? How do we, like, hey, we're going to pay for you all to be a part of this community, no strings attached. Well, guess what? What that means is all of these Marketo people who love their, their work, love where they're working, they're, they're on a rocket ship, everything's going well. They're in there talking about these amazing experiences and they're building credibility and awareness in a way that Marketo can on its own. So if I am a larger org trying to take advantage of a third-party community, I want to empower my people in that community to be ambassadors for us. Not sell, just be ambassadors. Good human beings who are smart and good at what they do, who get to bring our brand with them. That I would say if... Yeah, I mean, uh, those were all great answers. I love that stuff, Judd. I mean, nailed it. But I think if I could give somebody tactical advice on... <laughs> Preach! If I could give somebody tactical advice if who's thinking about starting a community right now, um, as a if you're a, a software company and, and you want a community, I'd, I'd be like, create, an, uh, create a real-life one. Create an in-real-life one. Get some, yeah. like community advocates and like spend some money have people go to a bar happy hour like coffee shop something like that i think those communities are they're harder they're, they're hard to build they're hard to get off the ground but like those are the relationships that are real they last um you know just because you brought up marketo like the marketo user groups that we did which were in person they crushed it for us they were awesome. We did have an online community and like it was good. It worked well. But I think if if we thought about where do we get the most bang for our buck in terms of spreading the Marketo kind of way of thinking about doing marketing automation or building programs, lead scoring, whatever, we got it from the Marketo user groups. But that's owned. That's yeah, owned. yeah, yeah. That's owned. That's owned. Would you, would you agree with Judd though that like you would create your? I mean, you would create. I forget the ambassador, right? Like people that could go into Reddit where your people are talking about, you know, something related to your business. That's the key to playing in the communities. I don't know that you have to. I don't know that you have yeah. to. I think if you want, I, I mean, I, I think that that is. I don't, I don't know that anybody would start a community thinking that way. They'd be like, 
hey, let's see if we can just make this work. I think that's a tactic to help drive engagement. And I mean, you think about it from everything, whether it's a webinar, whether it's a podcast, like you wanna have great guests and great people who have good ideas on things. And so you're sort of bringing that element there for discussion. Uh, I mean, the AMAs that happen on Reddit across multiple different communities are some of the most highly engaged pieces of content or pieces of events in community uh, that, that happen on, on Reddit. Uh, so, um, so I, I mean, sure. I don't know that it has to be ongoing. I don't know that it has to be all the time. And I don't know that like we all have the, the perfect answer for this just yet. I think, you know, the worst answer in all these situations is it just depends. The thing that I'll tell you is like the communities that I'm a part of with real people where we go out to dinner and we shake hands and we share stories are ones that are significantly more valuable to me than any of the communities that exist on Slack. So yeah. Just think about that. What one thing that I want to I, I do want to point out, and I know well, we can end it here though. Marketo did something really interesting. They had a long, it was a long tail play. They didn't build a community saying we need direct sales. They built a community of users and then built champions. The mm-hmm. champions, everywhere they went, they were showing off their I'm a Marketo, you know, superstar. Like I, I am one of the few, which brought validity to Marketo as a brand and open the door for more sales. I guarantee you, if your ops person was saying, we have to get Marketo, I'm I'm a super user, that's what we use, they're getting it. So yeah. there are ways to think through the entirety. And what I think Marketo really did well is seeing the end, what they were really looking for was to grow that army of super users that loved it and loved the what it made them in their minds by being these elite, right? And that helped to spread the word. So there are ways to do owned, but it is very difficult. Yeah, yeah, So you hit the nail on the head there. Craig, you, you take that one, you got the look. Ah, so guys. I, I, was, I was looking at time, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, I don't. I, those I don't glasses think. make it interesting. I, I can't tell if you're, you know, the Coke bottles. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I just think like, uh, we'll we'll have to continue to build coherence here, as everyone talks about community. I think we were mixing and matching uh, owned versus not owned, and in, in sort of how we're thinking about it. Uh, I do, but I will say that um, if I do agree with Matt, I'm not sure. So I think we're talking about community, but I'm not. I don't know that. Like, if someone came to me with a list of priorities, I'm not sure it's going to be in the top 10 yet. Yeah. Because don't you don't know. Have- yeah, I don't know if I disagree with you at all. I, th- I think you're accurate. And and right now, the amount of effort and money and work that it would take to build one that could have sustainable uh, and, um, results. So. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to GTM Unfiltered. To hear our innovative insights and strategies, visit gtmunfiltered.com. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Until next time.